Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. This is truth, not Ruth, actually. Uh, I actually didn't hear much of what went on because uh, you need to be uh, close to the uh, mic that's connected uh, to the computer system. But, okay, um, so I understand uh, we're in the Volkswagen, uh and I'd like to thank the Volkswagen for uh, Volkswagen, uh, again for uh, letting us use that space. It's uh, a quite important place uh, in the room. and we'll begin. Uh, we have about uh, 20 minutes, is that right? We're running a little over time. Huh? Yeah. So I, try, I try and cut it to a good thing so we have time for questions. Um, over the last uh, 10 years, uh, WikiLeaks has released 10 million documents comprising of 10 million words. And why uh, numbers are not everything, uh, they're a star. That's information uh, that never would have existed in the world uh, had we not released it. It would have been stored away somewhere privately, uh, but it wouldn't have become part of our uh, collective uh, civilizational knowledge. And um, it corresponds to approximately 3,000 documents a day on average. Uh, that's a hell of a lot of work. Uh, that's why we don't release uh, every single day. Uh, we do things at scale um, in order to, uh, say, uh, release uh, 100,000 documents at once. But it does pan out to about uh, 3,000 uh, documents per day. Now, why uh, do this at all? Uh, I'm in a position uh, where uh, I've been detained without charge here in the UK, in one form or another, prison, house arrest, last four years in the embassy, um, as a result uh, of this work. Uh, some of our sources, uh, um, some of the sources, uh, have suffered terrible consequences uh, in the United States. Actually, not many. Uh, we have thousands, uh, and there's only uh, a couple of the sources that are uh, facing difficulty, but um, Altogether, uh, in sources and supporters, uh, people have uh, been sentenced to uh, something like uh, 50 years uh, altogether. And the two most significant uh, cases are uh, that of Chelsea Manning in the United States, uh, sentenced to 35 years in prison, uh, purely for communicating uh, with the media. That's the allegation. There's no other allegation. Uh, against them. Um, the United Nations found that they had been uh, tortured uh, by the public to cruel and inhumane uh, treatment uh, akin to torture. Uh, Jeremy Hammond uh, imprisoned in New York uh, for 10 years. And a number, a number of supporters back in the, the heat of the kind of um, first phase of neo McCarthyist hysteria in the United States uh, in 2000. in some ways 
doesn't belong uh, to this time, it belongs to an old time, uh, perhaps a future time, uh, which is that um, through understanding the world, we can do something sane, we can do something rational. Um, it's not uh, something of a, as a, a, a postmodernist view, uh, of really grounded uh, rationality. Uh, where we can kind of point it, but we actually do. Um, it's fascinating to, uh, to understand the world around us, and through this understanding, uh, we can see justice come from it, as we have in, in many cases, uh, some of which uh, Sarah has pointed out. Uh, in fact, you can break down um, this quest uh, for knowledge and understanding into really the three parts of history. By history, uh, uh, journalists will understand that uh, I don't mean what happened 100 years ago, or not only what happened 100 years ago, I mean history so for now, uh, the history uh, that is unfolding all around us. What are the three types? So, type one, uh, the history which is subsidized, uh, where there is an economic interest in propelling it and promoting it. But of course, includes all kinds of advertising and propaganda. Uh, but it, it also includes very basic things, uh, such as uh, how to hammer in particular types of nails, how to how to build a pump, uh, how to buy an airplane. So it's been important information uh, for one that has an existing industry pulling it forth into the world. Uh, type two history. And this is unsubsidized history. History which has lost its economic subsidy. Knowledge which is no longer propelled in the world, but sits there and perhaps slowly decays. Uh, that's important to try in our case to buy that knowledge. But generally speaking, uh, it's not kept around because there, people don't find it interesting enough to keep around. And then there's the type three history, uh, and that is the type uh, that really key police is involved in. And the, I have been living uh, all my adult life. And that is subjugated history. It is the history where there is an active effort uh, to prevent it entering the world. And this uh, type of history, uh, if we can find it, if we can uh, grab hold of it, if we can put it in uh, to civilization and our collective memory, this is a type of history uh, that would not have otherwise existed. Um, that's true for nearly every document of it. It would not have otherwise existed uh, as something to be discussed uh, by uh, people of different languages and different cultures. Um, a good example of that uh, is uh, say the Iraq war logs. That's uh, a, um, a rich uh, documentation of the history of the war, in fact the history of two countries and that would not have otherwise uh, been present for the people of those countries or for the other countries that were involved in those wars to understand and, and derive lessons from. So through uh, collecting this type of knowledge, subjugated history, uh, we have built uh, this romantic ideal um, of a grand rebel library, that's what we do exist. A rebel library, a, a type of library of Alexandria. Uh, I think Alexandria, I think we probably have more documents than Alexandria, uh, but it is uh, a library that is not like any other library. Um, we have the first um, of we bring into the world being present, as opposed to uh, copies of books, which might be interesting, but uh, we're in the quest of trying to find original documents that have never been seen before and bringing them uh, into our collective knowledge understanding. Okay, so um, Sarah uh, has spoken about uh, some of the technical details uh, and a bit about practical history. Uh, I want to speak now um, about some of the things we're doing uh, going forward, uh, the future of Wikileaks. Well, I know this, I, 
I've seen the internet and I understand that there's enormous expectation uh, in the United States. Uh, but, uh, part of that expectation will be partly answered, but um, you should understand that uh, if we're going to make a major publication uh, in relation to the United States uh, at a particular hour, we don't do it at 3 a.m. Uh, that's something uh, we
funding model of FAS uh, is a very interesting um, model. FAS is a, a German uh, newspaper, um, and it's something that we have been working on for a while. Uh, WikiLeaks will uh, um, soon launch a membership system uh, where we will give uh, voting rights in relation to 20% uh, of the discretionary uh, expenditure uh, we have. Uh, it's important to keep us uh, in, independent and keep a uh, sustained um, and predictable income uh, as opposed to uh, um, significant uh, income coming from the times of publication but in the times of uh, between publications where there's extensive litigation uh, then um, the funding is more unpredictable which is a difficult position to be in uh, if you're in the middle of litigation. Um, Okay, on uh, upcoming uh, journalism, because we have uh, so many uh, uh, publications uh, due before the end of the year, uh, we're in, a, in both an enviable position uh, and also in a very difficult position of having, uh, having um, um, more than um, a million documents uh, to get through of many, of many different sources. Uh, we need to increase our uh, number of press partnerships. We have about 110 different organizations uh, over the years. I think there's about 89 uh, that are active at the moment. I think Sarah might have I, I displayed them before. But we need to increase the number, uh, especially in the United States. Uh, so journalists that are interested uh, in uh, taking one angle or another, are now coming public and getting in private access, uh, we do need to be a publication which has significant impact. Um, write to press at wikileaks.org uh, and uh, tell us what your circulation is and what the medium is uh, and what your uh, subject matter expertise is. Um, we have a book uh, which has just come out that is the Wikileaks Files. Um, it is out now in the United Kingdom. Uh, it is 40% off this week at Verso. If you just uh, Google Verso uh, Wikileaks files, or search for it, and send it away. Uh, that's a free book, uh, and it's available by ebook as well. Uh, we have another book coming out later this year. Uh, uh, these are uh, two books which I've written here uh, in the embassy one about Google uh, and one about uh, cyberpunks, how cryptography permits. Um, uh, journalists and others to um, protect themselves from uh, mass debate. Look at that. It, look at it. Uh, it must be the green. Um, okay. Um, now, up upcoming pub publications. Uh, we hope to be publishing every week for the next 10 weeks. Uh, now, we have on schedule, uh, it, and it's a very hard schedule, uh, all the US election related documents to come out uh, before November 8th. Uh, our upcoming series uh, include significant material uh, from war, from arms, from oil, from Google, uh, on US election uh, and on mass uh, So journalists who are interested in those subjects, uh, please write to press at wikileaks.org. Um, we will uh, be beginning the uh, first uh, publication in that series uh, this week. I'm not going to specify the hour uh, because, of course, uh, all the press blacks uh, get ready uh, to try and spin in the other direction. Uh, okay, so finally, uh, so we can get on to questions, uh, there's a lot of thank yous. I'm going to uh, avoid 10 years worth of thank yous. Uh, needless to say, uh, um, an endeavor like WikiLeaks uh, comes about um, as a result uh, of the efforts for a great many people and institutions, um, um, common allies, uh, love, uh, in some cases, sympathy and the, the thrill um, uh, of doing something that's important. Uh, so 
I, I don't want to uh, give um, a map uh, of, the, of all the important people um, by thanking them. Um, but that necessarily isn't um, a suggestion that everyone I'm about to mention is not important. It's a, it's a mixture. Um, first of all, uh, the committed team uh, of brave uh, technicians and journalistic staff uh, that make WikiLeaks what it is, um, which is a, uh, an organization which has technical understanding uh, at its core. That is our speciality, that is our um, comparative. Uh, uh, our sources, of course, without which uh, none of this uh, is possible. Um, we will always uh, keep your trust and do the best to get the best impact possible for you. Um, uh, shown over the years uh, that we do. Um, our readers, supporters, uh, and defenders uh, who keep our mission going, um, a lot of staff uh, and a lot of legal battles cost uh, a lot of money. Uh, and uh, it's only through um, the funding of our readers and supporters uh, that we're able to keep uh, that big ship going. Uh, our increasingly uh, formidable legal team um, the public, so it can be named, uh, including uh, Balthazar Kazan, Barry Pollack, Margaret Kunstler, United States, Amelin um, Taylor, Gareth Pierce, Stella Morris, Renata Abilia, Kerry Schenken, Jennifer Robinson, Julian Burnside, Greg Barnes, uh, and more than 100 other lawyers in different countries, uh, nearly all of whom are worth uh, uh, although their expenses. Uh, our allies, media partners, uh, and other defenders in hundreds of institutions and countries, uh, especially the Center for Constitutional Rights in the United States, uh, FFDN, uh, Reporters Sans Frontiers, Human Rights Watch, uh, the ACLU, and the Freedom of Press Foundation in the United States. Uh, Professor Gavin McFadgen, um, who's in a very uh, difficult um, way at the moment in terms of his health, Susan Penn, uh, and John Pilger, uh, who would be personally thanked. Uh, the people and government of Ecuador uh, and the United Nations uh, who have courageously respected my human rights uh, despite considerable pressure over the years. Uh, the people of Germany, uh, the people of Germany, the uh, Holland uh, Foundation, uh, Der Spiegel, uh, uh, Deutsche Zeitung, the CCC, uh, Angela and Daniel Richter, uh, John Gertz, uh, and there's many others who I mentioned. Uh, and uh, last, but perhaps uh, most significantly, uh, those who died fighting in this business, uh, Michael Ratner, the uh, legal counsel, uh, Don Jones, uh, who together with Melinda Taylor presented uh, our UN decision, uh, Aaron Schwartz, Lenny Weinglass, another one of our lawyers, um, rest in power. Thanks. Thank you very much, Julian. Um, so we have some time to take some questions. Um, yeah, sure. Julian, do you want to take that one? Because I think it's the false quoting of you that's uh, the, I, <laughs> the, the issue on some of this. Oh, sorry. Um, it was a referring to do we have any comments on um, whether the upcoming publications to do with the US elections will destroy Clinton or not? Um, <clears throat> there has been a lot of misquoting uh, of me and um, uh, WikiLeaks publications. Uh, uh, in this particular case, uh, the mis misquoting has to do with that uh, we intend to harm Hillary Clinton or I intend to harm Hillary Clinton or I don't like Hillary Clinton. Um, uh, all those are false. Uh, they come about as a result, uh, principally, it seems, uh, of um, uh, you know, his campaign and, and vendors uh, uh, trying to personalise uh, our publications. Um, our upcoming publications.
implications significant in relation to the U.S. election? Yeah, we think they're, we think they're significant. Um, do, do they um, show interesting features uh, of U.S. Uh, power factions uh, and how they operate? Yes, they do. Any other questions? Yeah, um, sorry, me again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Julian also implicate, uh, implied that uh, there's been some kind of uh, threats towards the Ecuadorian people as a result of uh, Ecuador giving Julian a fight. Can you elaborate more on exactly what kind of pressure they're under? Um, is, uh, Julian, do you want to... Uh, it, uh, the question is... You seem to have referenced that um, Ecuador or the Ecuadorian people have been threatened because of the decision to give you asylum. Is that what you said, Stroke meant, and can you elaborate any more? I, I didn't say threatened. I said that there is significant pressure. It is, um, if you read the Ecuadorian press, um, you see some of that uh, in play um, in relation to other forms of pressure. Uh, um, and developments uh, in, the in the United States in response to our upcoming publications uh, and the uh, DNC leaks. Um, well, we have a lot of sources, uh, and those sources are uh, in uh, US politics, uh, intelligence organizations, and their equivalents in the United Kingdom. And so, yeah, we know when there are developments afoot and where. Uh, aware of them, and we, uh, we will understand them and react accordingly. Uh, yes? Um, so far during this election cycle, uh, you focused on uh, leaks from the DNC. Uh, can you specify if uh, upcoming re releases, including before the election, would also affect the Republicans? Can you go that far? Um, that was... Um, trying to get into content of upcoming releases, re the elections, will it also cover Republicans? I mean, I, I, we generally don't go into sort of content of releases for quite specific reasons um, in that um, uh, part of bringing the impact and also ensuring or trying to minimize the, the ability to get up a spin before uh, we've actually gone live um, is one of the reasons why we keep the, the releases so confidential. So there are, there are good reasons for it. I don't know if you want to elaborate any more, Julian, though, on the Republican-Democrat um, um, spin that people have tried to... It's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, fascinating angles that are unexpected. I think he can't hear what we're saying. So it's he was talking about the 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 uh, publication. He said there's a lot of fascinating angles. That was the quote that he used. He can't really the sound I back to you. it. Yeah. It's <laughs> um, any other questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll go to the lady first and then come to you if that's okay. Yeah. Um, if you look at what you've, you've summarized this. Now, what you've accomplished over the past 10 years, looking ahead for the next 10, what are your goals overall, specifically, like what do you hope to accomplish in the next decade? Uh, the lady said, looking at the last past 10 years and then looking at the decade going forward, what do you hope to accomplish with WikiLeaks? What are your goals? Uh, in, in the goals going forward? Well, yeah, they, going they forward for a decade. Yeah, I mean, we've come to understand something about um, human, modern human institutions and how they work um, and how power works and how it's, how it's shifting uh, and that gives some ability um, although as everyone knows it's always limited to, to look forward and, and understand where things are going um, I, I don't think I'll surprise anyone by saying that serious um, uh, space in the, the global um, geopolitical order uh, as a result of either of the two current uh, presidential candidates uh, and the power factions that are behind them uh, and uh, waning uh, packs America in different ways uh, and the three the, the shifting
assembly of unpredictable uh, state powers and the major corporations uh, acting more and more like states. And by, by that talk back in the, in the 1990s that the, that the state was at an end, actually um, something really very different is, is happening now. But I don't think it's something that could have been foreseen at that stage. So as far as WikiLeaks is concerned, the more, the more we're in an interesting position, but the more that the world globalizes and digitizes, uh, the greater comparative advantage WikiLeaks has. Similarly, uh, the greater the levels of uh, censorship, uh, including self-censorship, um, the greater WikiLeaks comparative advantage is 